What is up my programming stallions? It's Real Touch Gmail here back with another video for you guys and today I have a really cool engine or whatever you want to call it that I have created for you guys. So basically it's a like a Minecraft Terraria type 2D uh, generating system, right? So here's your terrain and you know you go up and down and it can fluctuate all that you want. It is seed driven so here you can see a cool little and I actually used this same thing in a game I was making a while back and uh, it looked really cool I'll show you some gameplay here now so I have this down in the description for download but I'm just gonna kind of run you through it show you what how to use it and how it works right so here I have scripts. I have all of the script algorithms for this. You don't really need to go into this at all. Um, what we do have is the generate terrain. And here basically is where we generate our uh, our blocks in the game. So here we have a height of 30. So if we go into the game, as you can see down here, it kind of cuts off. Um, you know, so like if it goes up, it only goes down to a certain extent. So if we went ahead and like set this like to 10, let's try that. Then as you can see, it, it's only going to produce down to 10 blocks under the ground, right? So you can always clamp this as well. So if you wanted it to be just like a solid ending with like bedrock, then uh, you can do that, uh, which is pretty simple. Just fluctuating the code a little bit what I did in my game was I actually used this system here because you weren't actually mining on the ground and I created a lighting system all underneath here so it was actually really efficient to it because because it looked like it was generating lots of blocks underneath but it was actually just generating this chunk here which I think is really cool compared to a lot of other uh, terrain systems out there all right so you can fluctuate how steep the terrain is, how everything is in our generate object, and everything is commented for you right here. So the main variables we use is frequency, amplitude, persistence, and octaves. So you can read the comments. So distance between feature points, mountains, and valleys. So if we went ahead and set this to a lower number, then the distance between these feature points are going to be uh, well, maybe that's a little bit too low. Let's try that. As you can see right here. So now you're getting these feature points very close together. And now you get like a really cool, um, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is terrain or what this is, but uh, maybe you can do something with it. Let me go ahead and set our generate terrain back to 30. So it looks a little better. I'll try it again. Yeah, there you go. So it's all sort of stagnated. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and set it back. Uh, so here we have the amplitude. So how high or low points can go. So increase for deeper valleys and taller mountains decrease for flatter land. So if we went ahead and set this to 0.9, we are going to get large mountains and very deep valleys. So as you can see right there, it's going deeper. Let's try. Let's try even deeper. Let's try um, 1.5. So as you can see, it's even going underneath the map here now of of what we can generate. So let's go down to here. Let's say 50, so we can see a little bit better. So there we go. So now you're getting deep and tall valleys. Uh, so these, this is just really cool to play around. Persistence, chains, and amplitude per octave. Now an octave is basically, um, well, it says it right here, the number of iterations increase for more features and details. So but basically an octave is like a chunk in a sense. So if we put eight octaves here, it's basically creating eight of these um, like chunks 
inside a single terrain. So it's going to fluctuate and it's going to look a lot different. So as you can see right here, it now it fluctuates a lot differently because each octave is quite different. And this is actually a pretty cool little terrain system here. You can get like some cool effects. So if we try that, yeah, as you can see, it's now it's, yeah, it's pretty interesting though. It's pretty interesting. Let's go back to four and in our persistence, let's do two, 2.1. <laughs> so as you can see, we can get some really wonky and cool looking terrain through this system. So the download link is in the description. Go ahead and take a look. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you have fun playing around with this. It is C driven and up here, the chunk size, that's just how big I'm actually making that world. So if I make it 256, that's 256 blocks wide. So if I run it, we now get a larger world right here which looks pretty cool all right so go leave like go and subscribe uh, let me know what you guys want to see next I'm working on getting the Java videos out so uh, don't worry about that stay tuned and uh, I will see you guys next time peace